This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 921, an excerpt from the book, The Sugar Brain Fix, by Dr. Mike Dow, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, hope you had a wonderful weekend and a happy Monday to you. Welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily, where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs, all for free. I cover fitness, diet and nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors. And then on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. Now, I occasionally narrate from books, and that's the case today. Today's author, Dr. Mike Dow, I think is competing with me for having the most degrees. He's a New York Times bestselling author that practices adult and child psychotherapy, couples therapy, family therapy, and more. He has an MS in marriage and family therapy, a PsyD in psychology, and a PhD. You can find more about Dr. Mike at drmikedow.com. You see what I mean about him competing with me for most degrees? So I'm super excited to read this excerpt to you. So without further ado, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book, The Sugar Brain Fix by Dr. Mike Dow. In March 2010, the Scripps Research Institute released a groundbreaking study. Rats who were fed sugar and bad fat-filled diets of bacon, sausage, chocolate, and cheesecake developed full-blown food addictions, actual neurochemical dependencies as powerful as those caused by cocaine. In the study, rats were given different kinds of access to these brain-shrinking foods. Some were limited to only an hour of human treats a day, while others were allowed to eat bacon and chocolate virtually around the clock. While the rats with limited access ate moderately and were able to maintain their weight, the rats with more access quickly became obese and obsessed. It was astonishing how far these food-addicted rats would go to maintain their habit. When researchers withheld the junk food and tried to put the rats back on a healthy diet, the obese rats refused to eat, almost to the point of starvation. The rats would even choose to endure painful shocks to get the junk food. Their desperation to stuff themselves with foods made from sugar and bad fats and their willingness to endure pain in its service was strikingly similar to those of rats in different studies who had become addicted to other substances that also shrink the brain, cocaine and heroin. Using special electrodes to monitor the rats' responses, researchers discovered that foods with sugar and bad fats had changed the animal's brain chemistry in virtually identical ways to cocaine or heroin. Both excessive junk food and other types of drugs overload the brain's pleasure centers. The rats needed ever larger quantities of sweet, fatty food to get the same, quote-unquote, high. The more often you get high, the more the brain shrinks. We tend to think that food's comfort is an emotional issue and blame ourselves for being childlike or weak. But rats don't have psychological issues, and yet they were behaving exactly like food-obsessed humans. Because of the way the food had altered their brain chemistry, these overweight and food-addicted rats physically needed more and more junk food to experience pleasure, or just to feel normal. Unlimited access to these foods had turned them into addicts. Now here's the even scarier part. After cocaine-addicted rats stopped taking the drug, it only took two days for their brain chemistry to return to normal. For the food-addicted rats in the food study, though, their brain chemistry took two weeks to return to normal. In some ways, food habits affected the brain more than drugs. Unlike triggers for drugs, which can be minimized with planning, triggers for food are everywhere. You don't need drugs to stay alive, but you do need food. The Scripps study showed that we can no longer view unhealthy eating as a matter of willpower. After all, rats don't have emotional issues, childhood histories, or deep-seated associations between food and love. They know only what their brain chemistry tells them, and the obese rats were hearing the message loud and clear. Go for the bacon and cheesecake. This new research suggests that drug addiction and food addiction are products of the same neurobiology. That means that sugar and bad fats can be as addictive as crack. Most people eat brain-shrinking foods more frequently than most drug addicts get high because they do it every few hours, every single day. The Scripps study also showed that these foods don't have to take over our lives if we enjoy them in limited amounts. You can learn to be just friends with sugar and bad fats. That group of rats that was allowed to eat only bacon and cheesecake type foods for one hour each day enjoyed their treats, but they did not become addicted, nor did they gain much weight. 
they had access to seductive pitfall foods, but that access was limited. As a result, they never became addicted and their weights remained normal. In fact, their weight was quite similar to a group of rats who were never given pitfall foods and who were fed only rat chow. But the rats who had access to high sugar, bad fat filled foods around the clock experienced immediate weight gain. The rats became obese quickly and their weight spiraled out of control. Our brains are amazing chemical systems. They're designed to keep a nice steady balance with just the right chemical levels to keep us happy and allow us to function. We have in our brains pretty much all the chemicals we need to recover from pain, rise to a challenge, enjoy a thrill, or just feel good. Indulging might be fine if you did it only occasionally, but if you overdo the bad fat foods, your brain chemistry begins to change. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, The Sugar Brain Fix by Dr. Mike Dow. Come by drmikedow.com for more. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I still remember back in school when I was getting my registered dietitian credential. I was in a nutrition class and the professor mentioned, why do we turn to quote unquote comfort foods? You know, the same foods that Dr. Mike Dow was mentioning, high fat, high carb, high added sugar type foods. And I raised my hand and said, well, it's because those hyperactivate the reward systems in our brain, and that's why we turn to those for comfort. It makes us feel really relaxed and less stressed. And the entire class laughed at me. (laughs) That was because at the time, we didn't know this much about how these types of foods affect our brains. I'm gonna, you know, give myself a humble brag here and say I was a little bit ahead of my time. But now as more and more studies are coming out, that's kind of what we're learning is that when we consume these quote-unquote comfort foods, it triggers these neurophysiological biochemical pathways in the brain that make us feel good. Well, in case you're wondering, what was the instructor's point when I was back in school? She was talking about how we are often conditioned to turn to those foods, meaning when we're growing up, for example, our parents wouldn't feed us a carrot or a salad to make us feel better. Instead, they would feed us, what, candy. Here, here's a cookie. I'm sorry you scraped your knee. Here, have a popsicle, that kind of thing. But it turns out it's probably a bit of both. We were probably conditioned to turn to those foods by maybe upbringing. And at the same time, our brains felt super rewarded when we got those types of foods. So it was kind of a double whammy. But again, the great news is you don't need to completely avoid these foods. Heck, I love donuts, but it doesn't mean I completely stay away from them. I have them once in a while because I know if I had them every day, if they were in front of me, I would eat them. And I'm a dietitian and I'm telling you that. So yes, every once in a while, no problem. And that's why we keep saying everything in moderation. All right, that'll do it from me for today. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here every day. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a wonderful start to your week and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.